We are here today to launch the East and Southern African Parliamentary Caucus on Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights and Sustainable Development. This is a caucus that came together organically, comprised of members of parliament from several East and Southern African countries who are harmonized and united around reproductive health and rights in the region. It was important to launch ESAPAC on a number of grounds. Number one is uh, you get to adopt legal systems. In this case, what living documents, the constitution, the work plan, uh, the name itself, and everything that will guide you as you drive the agenda of uh, the regional caucus. Uh, again, you'll find that uh, you get to meet uh, like-minded individuals, in this case members of parliament from different countries. The partnerships with politicians are very important because as NGOs um, we are not the custodians um, and government, um, one they have the resources, two they have the manpower and three they have the mandate. So the us doing partnerships with um, governments and also other stakeholders is very key and cardinal for us. Basically, we want to look at the laws uh, and make sure that archaic laws or laws that impede uh, on uh, issues of sexual reproductive health are relooked to make sure that we conform to the change of times. In the recent past, within East and Southern Africa, we've seen a resurgence of several sexual and reproductive health crises among women, girls and men on the continent. You will recall that during COVID, we had long periods of lockdown in which schools were shut. And that had untold consequences, especially for girls. The most prominent one being, um, I would call it an epidemic of teen pregnancy in the region. With that came a lot of school drop dropouts and the consequences thereof. Economic independence is affected, and all these have a bearing on the reproductive health and bodily autonomy of women and girls. The issues of sexual reproductive health, and the, indeed population, are not women issues. They are issues that are affecting all of us. Unfortunately, uh, it is women uh, who are entangled uh, oftentimes. But we have always claimed to be uh, leaders of our families. Uh, but why should we choose where we want to lead? We must lead on decisions on how many kids we want in our family. We must lead uh, in decisions on how our wives, who usually carry, carry the babies, are taken care of. Their health should become a priority. We must choose how our young girls uh, and when should they get their first baby. Planning is very, very important. We want to fight from a united front. We want uh, to make sure that issues that are affecting Zambia, issues that are affecting Malawi, issues that are affecting Eswatini and affecting Zimbabwe, they're all similar issues. And we want to come up together and see how best we can have a model that speaks to the issues that are affecting our countries as a region and have one united front. Even when we go out to the world, when we seek for funding outside, from our regions, we are speaking with one voice. So we want to obviously ensure that um, the partners that we work with um, across the region are able to have that informed knowledge and also are able to then advance um, SRHI in terms of access to information for young people and also promoting um, advocacy as well to ensure that policymakers are aware of what is going on for young people and also without that um, making sure that young people are at the front of um, policy making and advocacy without leaving them behind because we know that they're the ones who are actually um, facing, um, you know, they're the ones that are actually facing the issues and the problems. So obviously you can't do work for young people without involving the young person. We invite all men and politicians at large to be part of this movement. It is a movement that if uh, 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 one joins, they will not regret. We are advancing healthy issues. We cannot claim to love when we don't care about one's health. And from here, I'm expecting that when we go back to our respective countries, we also recruit members from countries that are not represented here today, so that they all come on board and we fight as a united front. 
So the responsibility is on us politicians, the responsibility is on us parents to make sure that uh, we create a safe and a better place for our ladies.